You live in an environment that's really, really cold. In the middle of the winter, the ground gets so cold it can actually crack. And this cracking isn't the sort of thing you'd walk along and go, ah, fall into. It's a tiny little, very, very narrow little crack. But that a crack nonetheless, because the ground contracts as it gets really, really cold. That gap then becomes a place where water and sediment can accumulate, actually, and freeze, and basically form this very, very narrow little, very, very, very narrow wedge of, of ice with sediment. That summer, it probably melts again, more water and things can flow in there. Um, it freezes again. And what's really interesting is when that wedge freezes, it, it'll generally, um, somewhere in that wedge, there'll be a new crack that forms as the ground contracts again that winter during the cold period. It'll contract, it'll break open a little bit, produce another little gap that can again fill with more water and freeze. And this process occurs year after year, well, thousands of years. And over thousands of years, that wedge gets bigger and bigger, gets wider and wider. And the result is a really big ice wedge like this. And some of these things are, you know, 40, 50, I think you might have dropped something there. Some of these ice wedges may be 40 or 50 feet deep or more. And these are the little vertical stripes are the places where at one point there was a crack in the ice into which plant, you know, organic matter and silt, silt and dirt and whatnot float in. Um, so these holes are where people have taken samples. You know, they've drilled us back in. Or giant ice worms, one of the Yeah, <laughs> I don't want to meet those guys. <laughs> <laughs>